time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today we're talking about the controversial topic of the Windows 10 forced upgrade. Now in the last two weeks, I've received more emails and messages from you guys than I have in the entire past year from people that have said that they've woken up to their computer being upgraded to Windows 10 or already upgraded to Windows 10, or they thought they dismissed it or disabled it and said they didn't want it, yet they still had Windows 10 installed on their box. And I've seen this huge uptrend in this that I felt that it was necessary to make a video to both inform you guys about what Microsoft's tactics are in this situation and also to tell you how to protect yourself against it. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you guys is I think Windows 10 is actually a very good operating system. I run Windows 10 on William, which is my Puget Systems build behind me. I also run it on my laptop and on my HT PCs throughout the house. So I think Windows 10 as an operating system is good once you know what you're in for and you know how to disable all of the privacy invasion stuff like Cortana and all the little settings in the background that they don't really want you knowing about. So guys, I want you to get that into your head. Windows 10 is a good operating system. This video is not about hating on Windows 10. It's about hating on the tactics that Microsoft is using to force you to upgrade when you might not be ready to. Now, let me start off by telling you about my experience with upgrading to Windows 10. So my first experience to upgrading to Windows 10 happened on my HT PCs. And my HT PCs are actually my media computers that are connected to my television throughout the house that I use for all of my video streaming, my television recording, my cable card tuners, everything so that I get cable through the system using a USB cable card tuner called a Seton tuner. And when I upgraded to Windows 10, it said, oh yeah, you'll upgrade all your hardware, it'll work fine, everything will be great. And when I installed Windows 10, lo and behold, there was no media center. Those machines were media center centric machines. Without media center, they absolutely had little or no functionality for me since those systems jobs were to record television shows through cable card, through media center and share them with all the other media centers in the house. So I was pretty pissed off that Microsoft out of the gate didn't really make it known that media center wasn't a part of the upgrade. And I was even more pissed off that when it did the compatibility analysis prior to upgrading, that it said, oh yeah, everything's cool but it didn't list that Media Center would be missing. It's almost like they wanted people to upgrade and then have to deal with it after the fact. And I thought that that was a pretty piss poor move on Microsoft's part. I also ran into some initial hardware compatibility issues like using SLI with two graphics cards on my beast behind me. When I updated to Windows 10, the driver support just wasn't there yet. The SLI functionality crashed constantly and had problems. Now today, they've ironed a lot of that out and the driver quality is actually pretty good in Windows 10. But I'm talking about from the beginning here, it was an absolute horrid experience. And they also released several updates to Windows 10, which were forced updates. That's the other thing that I want to get into here is that when you install Windows 10, by default, you do not have control over how updates get deployed to your box. Windows just Microsoft just pushes these updates down to your computer and you have no initial choice in it. Now there are settings you can go into enable to say, I want to install these updates on a delayed schedule, or you can go enable some settings to basically say that you're on a bandwidth restricted internet connection and it'll basically defer the updates. And then you have control of your updates again. But the default behavior, unlike Windows 7 and Windows 8.1, where you had a choice of when you wanted to install Windows Update and what update you wanted to install, you lose that in Windows 10 without a lot of tweaking. Now, the problem, of course, is when you get a bad update that bricks your box, that puts you into a real hurt locker because before you could actually look online and somebody would be like, oh my God, don't install that update, don't install that update, and you simply wouldn't install it. And with Windows 10, it would just get pushed down to your box without your consent next time you reboot, you're screwed. Now there are ways to disable that automatic update and I did a whole video on Windows 10 privacy and there'll be a link right at the top of the video description down there and actually a link to this t-shirt too which is the Windows 10 we're watching t-shirt. This is actually my t-shirt that I created and it's to kind of call out attention to the Windows 10 privacy issues that everybody's talking about. Now I don't want this video to focus too much on privacy because I already did an entire video on that. What I want this to focus on is the tactics that Microsoft is using to force users to upgrade. Now let's start off from the beginning. When Windows 10 first came out, they started pushing Windows updates down to Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 that they, they labeled as security updates. You got to keep in mind, these updates were labeled as security updates, but they contained a secret payload that contained the little GWX application that pops up and says, do you want to upgrade to Windows 10? I even created one and 3D printed it just because it's so damn ironic. Now, when you clicked on that dialogue, you were presented with another little window that popped up that said, oh, I want to upgrade to Windows 10 or no, I don't want to upgrade to Windows 10 at this time. It was actually pretty straightforward and you could just say, no, I'm not interested. Well, people got savvy to this and figured out how to disable the GWX application and remove it from the system. Well, Microsoft responded not by listening to the customers like you and I and go, oh, well, people probably disabled it for a reason. They're not ready to get up to Windows 10 yet. Instead, what they did is they repackaged another GWX update in another security pack 
and then push that down to the user so that if you block the previous uh, KB uh, update from going on your box, it didn't matter because they put it in a new one to force it down to your box. So at this point, we pretty much know that Microsoft's intentions are not good. Their intention is to get Windows 10 on your box by any means necessary. Now, they also progressed and updated the dialog yet again so that when you opened it, you no longer had a clear option to exit out of the upgrade. Your options were uh, upgrade later or like schedule an upgrade, or you click the little X up in the corner of the box to dismiss the dialog, and then it might come back later it might not, but, but that was your only avenue of escape was to click the little X up in the corner. There was no cancel button. There was no, no upgrade now. There was no check this box to never be nagged again, which should have been options that were made available. But at this point, we already know that Microsoft is heavily invested in getting Windows 10 on your box. Now, just recently, in the last couple of weeks, a new update was pushed down to the GWX experience that would pop up the dialogue and say, your update is now scheduled. So now you don't have a choice anymore. It's, it's just by default, it's scheduled. And if you dismiss that dialogue or that dialogue pops up where you're not awake or you're sleeping and it goes away and you don't see it, well, now you're locked into a date to update your PC. And they claim that they give you a warning that pops up in a little notification toast that says, oh, you have 15 minute countdown to your update. But if you're sleeping, how the hell does that do you any good? It doesn't. People aren't up 24 hours a day, Microsoft, and you shouldn't be installing a, a whole nother operating system on somebody's computer just because they didn't dismiss a dialogue. That's pretty, that's pretty stupid. Now, the reason that Microsoft is trying to force these updates down to the box is because Windows 10 adoption is very important for a couple of reasons to Microsoft. Reason number one is Windows 10 represents their first real entry into a cross-platform operating system, meaning Windows 10, the, the core components of Windows 10 are essentially running on the Windows phone and they're running on the Xbox One. So what that allows them to do is if they can get everybody on Windows 10, now they can have Xbox games be sold and played on Windows 10 and potentially vice versa. And if they can get that ecosystem going with the Windows Store, now they're gonna have a much better capability to sell you software moving forward. Now, the next big reason that they want you on Windows 10 is because we live in the world of information. Information sells. Everything is about information. The more you know, the more that you know about a person, the more that you can advertise to them in a targeted way that's going to get the most impressions and get that person the most interested in the products that you want. Now, Windows 10 gives a lot of telemetry back to Microsoft. For instance, if you use Cortana, which is the voice activated assistant that's inside of Windows 10, when you say words and phrases, that information gets sent up to the Microsoft Cloud. Now, they claim that none of this information is associated with you personally, but that information is associated with a computer ID. So if you upload a piece of information that identifies you as a user, that can then be linked to every other piece of information that was linked to that computer, thereby making everything pretty much trackable. Now, some of you guys might be thinking at this point that I just got a giant tinfoil hat on right now. And some of you might be right in some respects, because let's think about it. We use Google every day and Google spies on us continuously through the Chrome browser and everything. We use Amazon products like Echo, which basically listens to every conversation you have walking around your house and in some way, shape or form bundles that information up and sends it back to the cloud. And you've got your Xbox One already that's sitting there and listening to everything you say. But the difference that I'm gonna argue here is that your computer, your PC, if you will, is where all the creativity happens. So it's where everything of super value is stored. It's where your backups are stored. It's where you do your creative work. Now, if you're an artist, you might have like a sketch pad or use an iPad with a pen or something like that, but chances are you're probably using a PC with 3D Space Navigator and a Wacom tablet and stuff like that because all content is created on PCs. This is kind of like hallowed ground as far as I'm concerned. So when I look at an operating system, I have much higher expectations for that operating system than I do for things like, you know, Google's products and Amazon's products and applications that run on top of an operating system. I expect that, Chrome's, that Chrome, for instance, is gonna spy on me. I just, I expect that. I know that I'm gonna have to go in and tweak settings to get it to stop doing that. I know that I can run it in a sandbox if I'm really worried about it. I can run it in a virtual machine or something like that so it can't screw with my system. But remember, when the operating system is the one that's doing the spying, there is no layer underneath it to police it. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit different in my opinion. If you guys have a different point of view on this, please share it down in the comments. I absolutely would love to see points of view on this, agreeing with me or disagreeing with me. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's definitely a touchy subject, so I expect this video to get a lot of likes and a lot of dislikes respectively because I know that there's a lot of people out there that are of the opinion that Microsoft should be able to just upgrade your box whenever and that Windows 10 is the greatest operating system in the world, so why wouldn't you want it? 
But then there's a lot of people like me that actually view it as why is Microsoft forcing me to do something instead of allowing me to do it in my own time. Now, the biggest complaint that I see from the people that got upgraded was they woke up, turned on their computer and it was in the middle of an upgrade. So they lost productivity. And I even talked to people that were in business environments where corporate computers in an office were actually updating. Now, granted, you could argue that they weren't running, uh, they weren't running their own domain with their own domain policy to prevent that from happening and it's their own damn fault. But I don't look at it that way. I just look at it as these people didn't expect Windows 10 to just be installed on their box all willy nilly. There's also people that woke up, and this is the this is a lot of emails I've been getting on this too, that it would upgrade to Windows 10 and then their apps, they would open them up and it would ask for registration again. Like some of the 3D apps that are out there, like NetFab and stuff like that, you have to re-register and re-enter your information for some reason when you upgrade to Windows 10, which I found a bit weird. But that's all extra stuff that you have to do now that you didn't wake up expecting to do. Now, the other reason that Microsoft is pushing this so hard down to the customers is because Microsoft needs to report high adoption numbers. They need to be say, oh wow, Windows 10 is on 12 billion PCs worldwide. And it doesn't matter if it was forced on your PC, whether you bought it with it on it, or whether whether you accidentally upgraded to it without any kind of intent, they still want that number so that they can count it and say, hey, look, the rest of the world, why are you not upgrading to Windows 10? Everybody else is running it. It's the same exact reason why Internet Explorer was the top web browser in the entire world for like 10 years. And it's because every single copy of Windows came with IE. And the first thing that you did when you installed the operating system is it opened IE and went to a web page. So of course, everybody was using the web browser, the IE web browser before getting the next web browser, henceforth making it the most most web used web browser in the world. It's an illusionary statistic. Microsoft has been doing stuff like this for years. That's no secret. So another tactic that Microsoft's using right now is they're saying that you have until July 29th to upgrade for free to Windows 10. After that, they're gonna charge you for it. At least that's what they claim. They haven't come forth with any pricing or anything like that, but I would be really shocked if Microsoft doesn't extend the offer. Like on July 29th, literally the next day, Microsoft comes forward and says, oh man, you guys have been so good at adopting Windows 10, we're gonna extend it for another year. Wink. Now the reason for that, of course, is because they're using information and telemetry and stuff like that from Windows to bolster their marketing campaigns, being their OS online services division, everything like that. So they, they're making their money through services now. They don't need to make their money through the operating system. They just wanna give the operating system away and they want everybody to run this operating system to give them the platform that they need to get the information to sell you guys the services and the integrated things like OneDrive and stuff like that to keep you going. Now, Microsoft is a for-profit corporation, so I don't ding them on any of these points. This is a good business model. Again, what we're talking about in this video is how they're forcibly putting software on people's machines in a way that's screwing up their productivity, messing up their computers, messing with application compatibility, and lying about missing features. Or I should, lying's probably a strong word, but in the case of Media Center, not telling the people when they upgrade, wait, we've detected that you use Media Center, we recommend that you don't upgrade to Windows 10 because there's no Media Center. Now, if you are one of the people that got screwed over by the forced upgrade, you do have 30 days to roll back to your previous operating system. And I'll have instructions down in the video description of how to do that, but you do have 30 days to roll back. Now, after that 30 days, what's gonna happen is the backup copy of your old operating system, which is kept in its entirety on the hard drive, will be deleted. You also should know that if you run the disk cleanup tools the admin, and you tell it to delete the old Windows files, that you will effectively ruin your chances of getting back to your old operating system. Now, if you guys are not ready to upgrade to Windows 10 just yet, you can go and get a tool called GWX Control Panel, and I'll have a link to that in the video description. Now, this is a very simple tool that allows you to basically disable the GWX service, kill the binary, kill the update from being downloaded, and it's a tool that continuously gets revised so that if Microsoft decides to change which update they deploy in it or the names of the executables or try to find a way to bypass it, they can instantly counter that, hopefully before you get screwed over and have software installed on your box without your consent. So guys, just to recap, I actually think that Windows 10 is a good operating system. Once you understand all of the telemetry and all of the data that they're gathering from you while using Windows 10, things like opening images and image viewer sends the name of the image file up to the Microsoft Cloud. Things like uh, opening and closing applications and stuff like that over and over again sends information to Microsoft saying which applications are being opened more than others. This is all data that they can use to drive their advertisement business. Now you can disable a lot of this telemetry by watching my Windows 10 privacy video and it shows you how to go through and use a tool to disable that. And I'm also gonna do a follow-up video on that because it seems like Microsoft has done some things to combat those countermeasures. So of course there's new counter countermeasures out uh, to fight that. So Windows 10 is kind of a new battle 
battleground when it comes to stopping privacy. But as an operating system, Windows 10 is incredibly good on resources. It's very fast. It has DirectX 12. So if you're doing gaming and stuff like that, a lot of mainstream games haven't adopted DirectX 12 yet, but when they do, it actually will be a huge advantage. And, uh, and there's some other advantages to running Windows 10 too, besides kind of the quirky new UI changes in the menu system, which really throws people. Uh, but by and large, I like Windows 10. Once I disable the whole application interface to go to the Microsoft store and download their incredibly limited applications, and once I disable the telemetry, I actually quite like it. Now, as always, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments or come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles on Twitter. Also, make sure you check the video description. I have a question and answer down at the bottom. So the most questions that get liked the most down in the comments, I will actually take that question and post an answer in the video description so that everybody can clearly see it. I really want to stress again, guys, I like Windows 10 as an operating system. What I am mad at is how Microsoft has changed their tactics to align with all of the people they criticized over the years. Microsoft at all the company meetings that I went to for 15 years at that company, we talked about the whole Scroogle campaign, which is Google's basically screwing you by copying your private information and by advertising to you and this and blah, 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 blah. And now Microsoft is doing the exact same things under its new leadership and they're heading down that direction. Now, who knows, maybe they had a meeting and they thought, oh my God, Google's kicking our ass. Maybe we need to do something a little bit more like them and be like them. But still at the same time, it made me really lose a lot of respect for the company that I put so many years of my life into. And I would really like them to have a wake up call from the public and get a nice little smack to the face and learn that it's more about the customers than it is about just maximizing revenue. They are a for-profit business. They do need to make money. They do need to increase their stock price and keep their shareholders happy. But the way that they're doing that in the short term, I think is gonna hurt the company's reputation moving forward. And I don't want that to happen, guys. You have to realize I have a ton of time invested in Microsoft products, including Visual Studio, all the programming languages I know, C, C++, C Sharp, .NET Framework, all that stuff is all Microsoft technologies. If Microsoft dies or becomes irrelevant, then I have to go learn all new stuff. So I am hugely in Microsoft's corner right now to get them to do the right thing so that they can stick around and keep moving forward and doing the things that I love about them and the things that I'm sure that you love about them. Now, again, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, that this video is an attack on Microsoft. And if you think so, hell, leave it down in the comments. I, I don't care, but I don't view this video as an attack on Microsoft. I view it on calling them out for their tactic that they're using on Windows 10. They make fantastic software, but they're just going about it the wrong way, forcing it down people's throats, and it's not gonna end well. So guys, thanks again for watching, and until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter, I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.